the World Economic Forum's terrifying vision for 2030. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at an interesting small piece of propaganda from the World Economic Forum. Now, if you're not familiar with the World Economic Forum, I suggest you have a look at some of their material and learn a little bit about this organization that has a yearly meeting in Davos of all of the global elites, you know, all of our betters, the people who are making all these wonderful decisions. The reason why there seems to be so much coordination across different governments and different levels of politics around the world. Now, I've done two videos previously, two live streams regarding one is well, from the IMF, the Global Currency Reset, while not directly the World Economic Forum, it's something that ties in quite closely to a lot of what you'll see coming out of the WEF. And I suggest you have a look at this video. It's already gotten over 9,000 views, so I'm quite surprised. And then here's another one we did. A live stream. It's a long one. It's two hours. And it's watching the Great Reset. And in it, we see a character that would not be out of place out of a James Bond movie, well, just explain and share the Great Reset with us, this fantastic vision. And you have reputable people like Prince Charles advocating for similar things. So what is it? Let's, you know, what, what's the idea? Let's have a look at the mission of the World Economic Forum. So the World Economic Forum is the international organization for public-private cooperation. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. It was established in 71 as a not-for-profit foundation and is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. It is independent, impartial, and not tied to any special interests. The forum strives in all its efforts to demonstrate entrepreneurship in the global public interest while upholding the highest standards of governance. Moral and intellectual integrity is at the heart of everything it does. Now, it all sounds nice. It sounds a little too nice. And wait till you see what their vision of 2030 is. And you can understand how this could be quite concerning. Now, the danger is when you learn about organizations like this, and then you see all the different you know, parties involved, you can start to develop some elaborate uh, interconnected web of people that are manipulating and, and influencing the entire world. Then you start seeing patterns and things emerge. And then you can be labeled a you know, tinfoil hatter or a conspiracy theorist or start selling vitamin water on YouTube channels like Alex Jones. Now, while that is a, a fun journey to go down, I would uh, I tend to think more towards the fact that you've got an organization here. We've got people from all over the world Lots of civil servants coming together. Lots of people who feel prestigious, you know, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Prince Charles and business leaders and Hollywood actors who all think the same way, who all have a, a very socialist agenda, who all have a very environmentalist agenda. And then that starts to permeate through all levels of our government, not from our political leaders necessarily, it certainly does, but more so from the actors in the bureaucracy. That's the real concern I have, because uh, addressing that would be quite a challenge. And that's, that's why you see you've got policy from the top all the way down to the local council level, tying into uni United Nations agenda, tying into <laughs> World Economic Forum, tying into the IMF. All of these things are interconnected. And it can simply just emerge, be an emergent outcome due to the relationships, the conversations, and the discussions people have. It doesn't necessarily need to be some global conspiracy. It can just be the prestige that people are attracted to this. They want to be part of the Davos manifesto. It makes them feel important. It gives value and meaning to their civil service career. We can read the 73 manifesto here, you know, code of ethics. But let's, rather than that, let's have a look at this propaganda piece from the World Economic Forum and let me know what you think about their well their vision for our future.
Oops, wrong thing. They're the patrons. 8 predictions for the world in 2030. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. So, uh, private property abolished based on input of members from the WEF's Global Future Council. So is this the futurist? I had a, a interview with a futurist on the channel and he was a rampant socialist, a rampant leftist. He really was. And uh, he, the one thing I found quite interesting talking with him, the one takeaway, he thought that having people of different ethnic groups would be enough to get diversity of opinion. He didn't seem to understand that one's ethnicity didn't simply mean you had different opinions or ideological positions, which was quite concerning and underpins a lot of the problems coming out of the, these uh, authoritarian leftists. So will private property abolished? Private property is one of the most, well, I would argue the most important thing of the state is to ensure they protect our right to having private property even though they seize it all the time. Whatever you want, you'll rent and it'll be delivered by drone. Isn't that a dystopian future there? You know, these drones flying around and delivering your goods to you. You won't own anything, you'll just be renting. Everything will be on a subscription basis. It just seems terrible. Dave Ramsey wouldn't be happy, I can tell you that. Number two, the U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. A handful of countries will dominate. What do you think, everyone? Perhaps, I, I think there's going to be a cold war between the U.S. and China that we're going to see materialize. Number three, you won't die waiting for an organ donor. Well, you might need one way till you see what else they talk about in this. We won't transplant organs, we'll print new ones instead. So that that's okay. Or medical advancements, I can see that happening. I actually was one of the first architecture students at QT to take advantage of the 3D printing technology that they had at the university. I had a model 3D printed, and it's a shame I lost it. I'm, I'm quite disappointed. Uh, and uh, to get that printed, I had to print the plastic, have a metal base into it and melt it away in an acid bath. And this was, I had to get access to the medical equipment where they could do it because they were they like print tested joints and things and, and, you know, little bits and pieces. That's one of the one advantage of university. You're there joining a club and you need to find out how you can take advantage of all the facilities. You'll eat much less meat. We seem, seem to be seeing, seeing this drive everywhere and this is where it's coming from you know you got the coming from the wef all the you know all the elites now if you look at lombok had done, has done a paper on this on particularly avoiding meat for the environmental benefits and he's a, a vegetarian it's inconsequential it's completely inconsequential you know living a complete vegan lifestyle for a year is the equivalent of five dollars of carbon credits but then I'd suggest if you account for, well, other negatives, it probably wouldn't even be less than that. But then you've got other people advocating for us eating bugs and all of these things. And really, you know, the meat will just be for the elites, not for us plebs. And, uh, you know, if you haven't watched my videos, you, you know, we're carnivore in our family. We eat a lot of meat. An occasional treat and not a staple. Well, this is the thing. If you look at regenerative agriculture, you look at where they're using herds of cattle to regenerate grassland, to reinvigorate farmland in a more traditional sense. It can be very good for the environment, eating meat. It really can. And it's starting to happen. It is starting to happen. The problem is a monoculture industry, which just decimates and destroys the environment that it's being farmed at. And, well... What industry likes to encourage monocultures or monocrops? Monocrops? Monocultures. For the good of the environment and our health. Well, that's this is 100% wrong. I can tell you right now. 
one outdated incorrect information and this is coming from the world economic forum you've got people like prince charles you've got movie stars you've got political leaders all coming together to this forum hearing this garbage which has been proven incorrect but doesn't matter this and then this feeds through to to the different you know dietary guidelines at different nations this is why you have here in australia you've got you know advocating for for diets you know, like vegan diets or vegetarian diets, where there's been no clinical evidence done, no actual scientific laboratory testing about the viability of some of these diets. Or you have people supplementing them with with artificial uh, pills, which are not as bioavailable as natural sources. There's the thing, you know, an animal eats something, stores it in a, um, in a way that's much easier for you to eat and digest. A billion people will be displaced, displaced by climate change. Okay, so I mean, this is the climate concern that just permeates this organization. This is why we're seeing this. There, are, people are worried that you know the world is coming to an end. It's a doomed, doomsday prophecy, you know. But but look at what else it it drives into. We'll have to do a better job of welcoming and integrating refugees. And I mean, you've got a lot of people advocating that there's tremendous social issues with huge dis displacements of populations around the world. Look at what's happening in Europe. Look at what recently happened in France. You know, and the thing is, historically, it's never worked. It has never worked. Mass migrations of people around the world always disrupts the traditional cultural group that was there in every country of the world. You know. Six, polluters will have to pay to emit carbon dioxide. So they're calling for a global carbon tax. This is just more taxes, more taxes. You won't rent anything. You'll have, uh, you rent everything. You won't own anything. You won't eat any meat. Uh, you'll be living in, in, you know, in a, co a community with um, people from all over the world coming together. Some will force there probably. And you'll have to pay tremendous taxes on everything to offset the carbon. To, to offset your guilt. And Australia is often portrayed as one of the one of the bad carbon uh, emitters. And he, this is a, a, a statement from Dr. An Alan Finkel, the uh, chief scientist of Australia. You know, if the world, he was asked, if the world were to reduce carbon emissions by 1.3%, which is what Australia emits, what impact would it have on the, uh, would that make on changing climate in the world? And his response was that the impact would be virtually nothing. It would be inconsequential. If you have a look at just how much China is emitting, it is inconsequential. And the argument that people put forward to is, oh, but you know, we need to do it just to feel good, just to make a difference. That's not how you make decisions that impact people's lives and the livelihood of children and entire nations. That's not how you do it. If you're thinking like that, then it's time to grow up, I'd say. Or you've been possessed by ideological ideological opinions and you're not thinking rationally number six there will be a global price on carbon yep this will make fossil fuels history now i know there's so many people that love renewables you know and think they're, they're gonna they're gonna save us I, i'd like to see more investment in nuclear technology i'd like to at least allow nuclear to be legal here in australia because it depends the problem is with different energy productions uh, solar you can deploy real quick so it's a good vote winner nuclear takes longer to deploy it's more regulated but in the long term it's better for the environment but it's not a vote winner that's what it comes to. it comes down to politics but any any it just means our power costs are going to get more expensive and eventually you know fossil will will disappear but we should let the market make that decision but they don't even believe in private property so who cares Seven, we could be preparing to go to Mars. Okay, fantastic. Scientists will have worked out how to keep you healthy in space. Okay, the start of a journey to find alien life. Eight, Western values will have been tested to breaking point. I think they already are. I think the West is in decline in many ways.
checks and balances that underpin our democracy must not be forgotten. They seem to already have. Look at look at all the the violence that's perpetrated in America right now. You've got you've got you know the militant left. You've got Antifa. You've got BLM just going around committing violence for political purposes. That's terrorism. And the media is just, you know, supporting it. So there you have it, everyone. The future predictions for 2030, according to the World Economic Forum. You'll own nothing and you'll be happier. I, Well, here's the thing. This being happier kind of flies exactly in the face with their argument against meat. It flies in the face of eating less meat. You'll notice if, if you go on, on YouTube or... Well, one thing we learned watching a whole lot of lectures from Low Carb Down Under and other proponents of, of more traditional meat diets, not with all the processed food and the artificial food. Think about it. You know, I'm of European descent. I would not have gotten as much exposure to tropical food, you know, in ages past i wouldn't have we and even now we wouldn't have access to all the different types of you know fruit and sugary products and food it would be seasonal you'd eat it seasonally even the meat would be seasonal not anymore and one thing that that is quite interesting is that mental illness or depression can often um, well a vitamin deficiency can often manifest as depression so a nutritional deficiency and Often that can that can be why you can see all these vegans who just aren't managing the balance right because it's bloody hard can come across with being less happy, being depressed. So this flies in the face of it. So what they'll it'll be like the dystopian, you know, what is it, the Rick and Morty where they're popping pills all the time to regulate your emotions. So what do you think, everyone? Do you not want to have private property? You know, do you think the US won't be a superpower? Uh, you know, excited about getting printed organs and an occasional treat for the good of the environment, not eating your meat. I think I'm pretty clear of where I uh, think about that one. You know, we need refugees everywhere all over the world because of the, the climate change. You know, less fossil fuels and we'll all be going to Mars. So it's it's a bit fanciful. It certainly is. But what's concerning is, well, what's concerning is the tinge of uh, of socialism that goes through all of it and if we look at we look at you know this the great reset now they're trying to they're advocating for at this level they're trying to push to take advantage of the disruption to the global economy that's been orchestrated by governments all over the world through encouragement of the imf not the world health organization they're encouraging or governments to lock down, to restrict the environment. It's an opportunity, guys. You can't waste an opportunity. You don't want to make Charles unhappy. So what do you think, everyone? What do you think? Are you a fan of the Dub World Economic Forum? Would you like to live in a world where you don't own anything and rent everything? I think that alone is the most terrifying prospect of everything they're putting forward. Just imagine the anxiety of always having to meet that constant payment and never having anything that you could call yours. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy merch from High Success, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care. I'll see you next time.